Here we're going to be looking at a notes receivable exchange for property, goods, or services. So going through our definitions. A note received in exchange for property, goods, or services based on an arm's length transaction. The stated rate of interest is presumed to be fair unless uh, either one here, no interest rate is stated on the note. Two, the stated interest rate is unreasonable or three, the face amount on a note is materially different from the current cash sales price for the same or similar items or from the current market value of the note or the debt here. So under these circumstances, the present value of the note is determined by the fair value of the property, goods, or services exchanged or by an amount that reasonably approximates the fair market value of the note. So looking at our example here, we'll go through Corporation A sold land here to Corporation B in exchange for a five-year note having a maturity value of $70,500 and no stated rate of interest on this note. The land originally cost Corporation A here $28,000 and at the date of sale the land had a fair market value here of $40,000. So in this example here, uh, in, in if there's no stated rate of interest here, the amount of the interest is the difference between the face amount of the note and the fair value of the property. So what are we looking at here? The fair market value of the land or the property in this case um, at the issuance date here of the note is $40,000. And then going out here at five years at the maturity date of this note, the face amount of the note here is $70,500. So what we have to do is we have to determine what the or int what the interest rate is that we would impute here on this uh, loan or this note. So all notes have an interest element due to the time value of money. So we've got a five-year span here between our market value of the land here at $40,000 and the maturity here of the note here at $70,500. So plugging it in your calculator here, we can determine what the internal rate of, re of uh, internal interest rate here is based on this cash flow and we would determine that to be 12 percent here. So we have a discount on this notes receivable here. It had a uh, mature the notes maturity value here is seventy thousand five hundred dollars and the uh, exchange for the lands fair market value here at the issuance of a note is forty thousand dollars so we have a discount this note is discounted here for thirty thousand five hundred dollars now we can go back here and check our uh, present value here of the uh, of the principal amount here on this note so our present value here of this note is forty thousand dollars and that's the fair market value of the land so just going up here and looking at plugging this into our calculator doing a determine the, the present value here of this note at its maturity at seventy thousand five hundred dollars discounting it back here at the beginning of the period period here discounting the principal amount here back for five years at the twelve percent interest rate we're going to find out that the present value here is forty thousand dollars here which uh, it would be the same here using our internal rate of return function. So we just proved that uh, using this internal rate of return function, we were able to determine the interest rate here on this note based on our cash flows here. So next we'll go in and we'll look at how we'd record this note and how we'd amortize the discount here on this note. Now we'll look at how we discount this note and record this note here. So we have a discount on our notes receivable here. We have $70,500 in the maturity value here in the note and the fair market value of the land here was $40,000 at the issuance of the note here. So the difference between the $70,000 and $40,000 gives us $30,500 and that's what we have to amortize here. So we're going to be looking at our note discount amortization schedule, setting it up here using the effective interest method and we're going to discount this or amortize this note here at 12 percent and that's the percentage that we calculated earlier here. So uh, looking at our amortization schedule we start out with our balance here at $40,000 and that's the land's fair market value or the present value here 
of the note at $40,000. And we have to amortize it up here to $70,500. Now, that would be the note receivable here at its maturity. So how we do our amortization here, uh, well, first off, let's look at it. We have a zero interest here on this note here. And the, so we'd have no cash payments for the, any interest here. But we're going to calculate some interest revenue here and then the discount that we've amortized here. And it just happens to be since we don't have any uh, interest payments here, the interest revo revenue is, is going to equate here to the discount amortized in this note. So how would we uh, 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 amortize this note here? So we take our beginning balance here of $40,000 here and multiply it times 12% or the discount rate here on this note. And we would get an interest revenue for year one here at $4,800. Now, since there isn't any payment here, the discounted amount or the amortized amount on this note equals the interest revenue of $4,800. So we just go in and add our $4,800 to our uh, amount or balance here, our beginning balance on this note here. And we come up with our next uh, balance here for year, end of year one at $44,800. Again, taking that times the effective interest rate here of 12%, uh, we get interest revenue here for the end of year two at $5,376. And then that just carries over to our discount that we have amortized here, adding that 537 $5,376 to our $44,800 beginning balance, we get our new amount here that we have to, our new beginning balance here for the end of year two here. So and just continue on multiplying that effect or that interest rate or the effective interest rate times the beginning balance gives us our interest revenue and just will amort and just continue amortizing that up here until you get to $70,500. So after this amortization here, you can see that our interest revenue that we're going to recognize here for this uh, note is $30,500. And that's the same as the amount that we amortized here, $30,500. The difference between the, the uh, land's fair market value here at $40,000 at the issuance of the note, and then the uh, maturity of the notes receivable here, $70,500. So what we've done here is we amortize the discount and we're going to have to recognize inter interest revenue each year using the effective interest method, which we've done here. So let's go and look at how we'd record this. Now remember, Corporation A sold land here to Corporation B in exchange for this five-year note. And we're going to be looking at it from the Corporation A, the sellers of the land's perspective here. So the first thing we do here is we we'd rec record a notes receivable on this land exchange here for $70,500. Now that's the um, notes maturity value here. But because we have this discount here to the notes receivable, and that discount is based on the amount of the yield between the issued date and the maturity date here of this note here. So the discount amount that we had was the $30,500. And this taking this off our amortization schedule here, we would reduce our discount each year or year by the amount of our amortization schedule until we get down to $30,500, which uh, accounts for all our discount here to the notes receivable. Now at the same time we would recognize interest revenue here on the income statement by the what we calculated here on our uh, amortization schedule and that just happens again equate to our discount amount here on the notes receivable and a total amount here again is $30,500 and one other thing here uh, for the land here for our notes receivable we would credit it here reduce our land account here by $28,000 based on the land's original cost here and then we also would have to recognize a gain on the sale here on our income statement and that we would credit here for $12,000 and that was based on the fair value here of the land at $40,000 and then the cost of the land here had a cost of $28,000 so the difference here between the $40,000 uh, fair value and the cost here at $28,000 gives us $12,000 which is a gain here that we recognize. So this is how we'd record here this uh, note uh, uh, where we're exchanging it for land or it could be property or services but this is how we'd account for it.